it frankly could be that um, the Senate leadership may not understand. They may not think that this is a crisis yet. And, and I, I suppose it's not an earth shattering crisis yet. There's been a lot of talk lately about how senatorial courtesy has slowed the confirmation process. OK, brought to a stop the confirmation process for state Supreme Court justices. This is, you may recognize, not particularly new. Hand-wringing over senatorial courtesy is a regular occurrence in New Jersey politics, but this time, say experts like former public advocate and Rutgers Law Professor Ron Chen, senatorial courtesy has the potential to do some real damage. Those of us who are observers of the court have been noting that, uh, except for unanimous decisions or decisions that are so overwhelming that it, the, the, the vacancies don't make a difference, uh, in cases of some import that we need the court to decide are being delayed. Multiply that by scores of other cases overflowing the dockets of lower courts where vacancies are mounting as well, and maybe you get a sense of Chen's urgency. This is one where you could very, very easily say, oh, it's the Senate, right? Because they're the ones who are holding the bag. But it's actually a two-way street, right? So it's got to be a priority on the part of the Senate to confirm, and it's got to be a priority on the part of the administration to confirm. And if there are obstacles, then the administration has to remove them one by one. And it's blocking and it's tackling and it's hard work. But let me tell you, the quality of some of these uh, uh, candidates <clears throat> is phenomenal if they could just get out there and make the case for themselves. For example, Rachel Wayner Apter. Apter's nomination is being held up by senatorial courtesy exercised by Senator Holly Shapizzi. And Matt Platkin is still only an acting attorney general because his confirmation is being held up by senatorial courtesy exercised by Senator Dick Cody. Neither was available to talk to us today. The first rule of senatorial courtesy, evidently, is you don't talk about senatorial courtesy. It's just a tradition. It's not written in the Constitution. It's just a tradition. And, and I worry, frankly, about all those kinds of gentlemanly traditions. Um, you know, if they're not written down, there's no reason they, they have to be honored. But <laughs> other than the fact that it's served the state so well over the years. But in our increasingly polarized democracy, it can be tempting for ideologues fighting culture wars across the country to pick a fight in New Jersey, where slowing or stopping judicial appointments, including lower courts in the state, can so easily be accomplished. We have this tradition of partisan balance, which I think has really uh, kept our courts above the political fray. And to the extent that they get sucked into that political fray, it, it really hurts, it hurts the state. But senatorial courtesy has held together the fabric of the state's democracy or has put immense power in the hands of a few politicians to wield for whatever reason they choose. Whichever side you believe, senatorial courtesy appears to be here to stay so long as both parties agree to wield it equally. I'm David Cruz, NJ Spotlight News.